frequency of weather disturbances in this country has been alarming. Typhoons, which bring about extreme winds, have been known to devastate both natural and man-made enemies of our environment. Because of these, wind engineering, a subset of structural engineering, is of key interest to all, as it addresses And then, okay lang, uh, maganda rin naka-ano siya eh, naka-steady. Kasi, yun. But also the discomfort that may arise from relatively gentler winds. The speaker for the topic at hand received his bachelor's and master's Hi. degree in civil President. engineering Hi. from the University of the Philippines, Diliman, and placed Hi. second Ronnie. in the May 2000 CE board exams. He recently received his doctorate of engineering from Tokyo Polytechnic University. He is a senior lecturer <coughs> introducing wind engineering to the undergraduates of UP Diliman. He is also a Manila-based wind engineer for Rowan Williams, Davis and Urban Incorporated, one of the very first wind engineering firms in the world. He has been involved in a number of performance-based earthquake engineering and structural vibration control projects. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Dr. Ronji Aquino. Good afternoon. Um, so, wind engineering, that's what I'm going to talk about, and uh, more specifically, I'm going to answer the question, what is wind engineering? I'm, I'm sure uh, that's what you're asking then, what is wind engineering? Uh, that's what I'm going to answer. And uh, I, my guess is, uh, when I tell you wind engineering, uh, or yeah, anyway, my guess is when I tell you wind engineering, this is the first thing that comes to mind. My, just my guess, tama ba yun? Kasi you know, when, when, I, mean, I mean, when I tell people, uh, mga friends, colleagues, uh, that I'm studying wind engineering, ito yung una nilang iniisip, wind energy, so wind turbines, etc. Which is, pars well, partially true or partially correct because actually, wind energy uh, is one aspect or one application of wind engineering. But, uh, it's not true because when we say wind engineering, it's not just wind energy. So as I said, there are three applications. Uh, two other applications are structural wind engineering and environmental wind engineering. Um, <clears throat> if you try to memorize lang itong tatlong to, structural, structural, environmental, and energy, uh, and if you're familiar with the specialty divisions of civil engineering, so I'm sure you're all studying structural engineering, geotechnical engineering, uh, transportation engineering, and so on. Anjan din yung environmental and energy. So basically, anjan din yung structural, environmental, and energy. So in short, kubaga may overlap or may, yeah, may overlap yung wind engineering and civil engineering. In terms of yung mga definitions, ito yung, let's say, uh, tinurus naalala ko from my undergraduate na definition of civil engineering. Uh, civil engineering is the art and science of using the resources of nature for the benefit of man. So using the resources of nature for the benefit of basically all of us. And meanwhile, the official definition of wind engineering is that it is the study of interactions between wind in the lower atmosphere and man and his works on the Earth's surface. So wind in the lower atmosphere, kasi is in, let's say 400 kilometers deep yung atmosphere, pero even our tallest building is just not more than one kilometer high. Uh, and then, of course, yun, yung mga buildings, us, humans, and so on. Uh, there are two aspects to it. So if we're talking about strong wind, let's say, uh, we're talking about typhoons. Uh, of course, we have structures, yung mga billboards, buildings, and, uh, and bridges, many more. So when we're talking about structures, we need to design them properly, select the proper materials so that they can withstand strong wind. But at the same time, we're concerned din natin when there's weak wind, kung mahina yung hangin. So for example, if we have pollution, actually we prefer na, mas, na may hangin so that the pollution will be blown away. Uh, likewise, let's say if we want to generate energy from wind, because wind itself is a, you know, basically it's a natural resource, resource uh, we need wind then so to produce energy. So, so, siguro, that's part one of uh, my presentation, three parts ito. 
Uh, what I just wanted to say uh, basically here is that wind engineering, uh, if you're new to it, basically it's a subset of civil engineering. So if you're practicing wind engineering, you're basically practicing civil engineering then. And if you are a civil engineer, like, like I was, I graduated civil engineering, the like structural engineer, and so on. Uh, and then with just a bit more study, you can also start to practice wind engineering. Kasi may, may mga bagong things na, let's say, hindi tinuturo sa undergrad civil engineering na kailangan for wind engineering. So we'll talk about a, bit, a, a, a little bit about these things. Uh, so I alluded to na the three applications of wind engineering, structural, environmental, and energy. And then meron din dyang, uh, for, for each of these applications, meron three uh, fields of study or disciplines na pinag-aaralan sa wind engineering, namely what I call first yung engineering meteorology. So, of course, when we talk about pag-asa, they're, they're basically meteorologists. Pero the meteorology that they're studying, uh, iba din sa meteorology na kailangan aralin sa wind engineering. So that's why I call it engineering meteorology. I'll talk about this in a while. And then there's this thing also called that uh, block body aerodynamics. So aerodynamics, I'm sure you've heard of that term. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit. And then, of course, design. Engineering design, structural design, environmental design, uh, design of your wind energy turbines, and so on. And then, finally, on the rightmost uh, uh, column, and then yung mga common tools na ginagamit sa so wind engineering, wind tunnel, computational fluid dynamics, and uh, full-scale measurements. So, first, I'll talk about structural wind engineering because this is my, ano, in my background. Kapag, uh, I was a structural engineer, uh, uh, and then I studied wind engineering. And I asked that, kasi, kumbaga, why do we need to study structural wind engineering when these things happen? Uh, I, I guess most of you, or all of you, hindi pa kayo kinanganak nung nangyari to. So I was, uh, I think, uh, grade, grade 4 siguro, I forgot, uh, during that. Uh, actually, in the grade 2, when this happened, but uh, it's a known fact that uh, earthquakes happen and has happened and will happen here in the Philippines, lalo na dito sa Metro Manila. Uh, so, yun. Uh, I mean, many civil engineers, of course, are interested in earthquake engineering. No problem about that. It's very important to study earthquakes. Uh, and in fact, if we look at kubaga per event, let's say per earthquake, per typhoon, uh, basically earthquakes kill more people and injure more people. So, ito average numbers, we're talking about 1,000 people on average killed per earthquake compared to not more than 300 for typhoons. Although in terms of cost of damages, medyo magkapareho yung average numbers. Uh, pero if we look at, let's say, 100 years of typhoons and 100 years of earthquakes, ganito yung picture. And basically, you can see a big discrepancy. Basically, typhoons, has killed, let's say, 60,000 people compared to nasa 21,000 people lang sa, uh, due to earthquakes in, in 100 years span to. Uh, and uh, cost uh, $7 billion in damages, again, in 100 years, compared to just half a billion uh, due to earthquakes. So, I, I mean, I, I, ako personally, that alone, nakita ko ng statistic na to, and nakita ko na lahat ng mga kakilala ko civil engineers known they're studying earthquake engineering, which is, as I said, important, pero, so that's why I started, you know, studying wind engineering then. And, you know, uh, you're familiar with these recent events, Typhoon Pablo, meron na dito taga Mindanao, yung mga affected areas of Typhoon Pablo, uh, hindi nakaabot. Anyway, so, basically, Typhoon Pablo is the costliest natural disaster so far in the Philippines. Uh, so, more than 1 billion US dollars in damages. Uh, basically, the actual the wind speeds of this uh, typhoon exceeded the design wind speeds of basically of all structures in, in, their, in the affected areas. And ang daming nangyari, madaming natumbang uh, buildings, mga puno. In fact, I'm, I'm sorry to show you this photo, pero it's the reality, maraming namatay. Uh, more recently, if you're from Metro Manila area, uh, even sa Laguna and around Metro Manila na affect din noong 2006 typhoon millennio, uh, siguro you can say this is, uh, we can say, one of the most significant wind disasters in Metro Manila. Pero this is the funny thing about it. Yung 
by if we follow the yung design code na tinatawag yung standard uh, dapat 250 km per hour na wind speeds bago mag-collapse yung mga structures meanwhile etong typhoon millennium 160 km per hour lang ang maximum wind speeds niya so you know uh, but uh, i mean kahit na mahina lang siya mayroon pa ring mga nagtumbahan na structures so of course there's uh, many aspects to it but basically, there's a lot of room for improvement and for, for study, for further study. No? So, uh, as you know, marami natumbang billboard structures. In this case, natumba pa siya on top of a bus. And then may, may laban yung bus na may namatay dun sa loob ng bus. Uh, ating paborito ni Jollibee, yun din yung lunch ko kanina. Uh, <clears throat> ayun, well, anyway, sign niya sa San Pablo, Laguna to, I think. Uh, and then maraming, of course, uh, mga poste ng kuryente na tumba, uh, transformer na hulog. Uh, in fact, in, in this one case, na hulog din sa, uh, sa isang sasakyan. Uh, mga lightweight structures, uh, waiting shed, mga puno, and then nakaharang na sila sa daan. Uh, and then meron din mga natumbang uh, sasakyan sa, sa Makati to. Uh, and if you're from Naga City naman, sa Bicol, uh, 2004 Typhoon Indeed, direct hit to sa Naga, basically same story, uh, natumbang um, poste ng uh, kuryente, billboard, mga roof, uh, and also mga uh, tall, yung mga towers, uh, electrical transmission towers. And then, ito, hindi ko na ipapakita yung video, pero if you can search on YouTube, yung Tacoma Narrows Bridge Collapse. Ang nangyari din dito, basically dito na kumpisa yung wind engineering. Kasi ang nangyari din dito, parang tama naman yung design, tapos mahina lang yung hangin, pero ang laks pa rin yung vibration. So parang doon naging curious yung mga tao. And then of course, uh, bukod sa strong wind, we have uh, flooding due to typhoons. Uh, also a big concern for us recently. Uh, I guess all of you uh, have some experience with Typhoon Ondoy. Ako yung uh, house ng mother ko, yun basically mas mataas pa sa akin yung baha. Uh, uh, siguro mga 2 meters high. Uh, well, uh, al alam nyo na yung story yan. No? So these things uh, are our concern. Uh, uh, they affect people, they affect lives, uh, and so on. So actually, yeah, I, I'm talking about, I was talking about structural wind engineering, wind engineering. Uh, just to let you know, uh, so, uh, well, in first slide ko, sabi dun, I'm a member of the Philippine Institute of Civil Engineers this, uh, Committee on Disaster Mitigation and Preparedness Strategies. And parang, ayun yun, pinapromote namin din yung concept na typhoon engineering. So, basically, sa typhoon engineering, concern mo yung wind, therefore you'll study wind engineering, Concern may flood, therefore you also have to study flood control engineering, concern may storm surge, and then coastal engineering and so on. So, uh, we're also promoting this type of engineering, but of course wind engineering is an important part of it na yun, we're promoting na hopefully maraming uh, mag-take interest in it. So, uh, to summarize in part two, uh, each typhoon brings about strong winds, heavy rain, high floods, landslides, mudslides, and so on and with it, plenty of property damages and fatalities. But by design, actually by design, dapat walang damages, walang namamatay due to, let's say, just due to wind alone. By design, by, by the standard. So, of course, earthquake engineering, as I said, is very important. Uh, many people are studying it, pero typhoon or wind engineering are just as important uh, as earthquake engineering. So, we need more people studying wind typhoon engineering. And again, civil engineers are in the best position to study wind and typhoon engineering. Uh, ako, masaya na ako kung meron at least lima sa inyo dito na magiging interesado sa wind and typhoon engineering after this after this talk. So part two yon, Part three, basically, last part, parang everything else na related sa wind engineering. Just to introduce to you, kasi maraming aspects yung wind engineering na uh, ang, yun nga, ang common uh, impression about wind engineering is either wind energy or yung structural uh, wind engineering lang. But in fact, maraming aspects, like I said, meteorology, full-scale measurements, Pag-asa, of course, does that. They have uh, plenty of stations around uh, the Philippines. Ginamit natin yung nag may civil engineer na nag-analyze yung data from Pag-asa. And then, he came up with this uh, 
parang, let's just say, design wind speed map. So, depending on the, your location in the Philippines, you can select a design wind speed for designing your structures and so on. So, again, civil engineer yung nag-generate nito. I, I mean, basically, yung pag themselves do, do not create these kinds of maps. So, usually, it needs an engineer to do that. Uh, and then, as I said, one important thing then, one difference between yung meteorology na inaaral ng wind engineers sa inaaral ng, uh, let's say, meteorologists for pag is uh, yung, you have to consider yung tinatawag na exposure or yung terrain. So, for example, if you're talking about, if you're designing a building, let's say, in the middle of the picture, you have to consider that maybe from the north, maraming uh, trees, from the south, maraming tall buildings, uh, to the left, maraming, oh, may, well, may open space, and then short buildings to the right. So, these things we have to consider when we're doing wind engineering. Uh, and, if, and if your structure then is uh, by the seaside, so you have stronger wind there, so you have to consider that. So, y yung mga ganong details, kumbaga parang in a smaller area, yun yung concern natin sa engineering meteorology. And another concern is uh, yung tinatawag na topographic effects. Basically, <clears throat> kasi yung inaaral ng pag-asa is, uh, anyway, let's just say, up slightly higher atmosphere na uh, weather systems. So, ang concern natin dito sa ground, uh, by default, we assume na flat uh, yung uh, surroundings ng, let's say, building and so on na inaaral natin. Pero basta may konting mga bundok na hills, slope, mga valley, so kailangang i-account yun. Uh, and then, I was talking about aerodynamics then. When I say aerodynamics, siguro yung una yung naiisip, kotse or aeroplano. Uh, so, uh, of course, you know, automotive or sa aerospace industries, definitely pinag-aaralan nila yung aerodynamics. But uh, yung isang difference sa pinag-aaralan nila kaysa sa pinag-aaralan natin sa wind engineering is that um, <clears throat> Yung dito, kumbaga yung tinatawag na ano eh, uh, streamline. Kumbaga parang aerodynamic talaga. Aerodynamic design yung shape ng uh, kotse at saka mga airplanes, uh, spaceships and so on. Whereas, yung concern nga natin sa wind engineering yung tinatawag na bluff body aerodynamics. Siguro ito yung pinakasimple uh, example ng bluff body aerodynamics. It's not really design, it's not really aerodynamic. Pero, uh, of course, hindi yan yung concern natin when we're talking about wind engineering, ang concern natin ito, mga ganitong classic shapes. I'm sure yung iba sa inyo, yung bahay nyo siguro, uh, or yung building na kung saan kayo nag-aaral and so on, uh, ganito yung shape. Kumbaga rectangular, parang box type, kung minsan may bong. Uh, so, definitely, iba yung shape nito kumpara sa ponche, kumpara sa aeroplano. Iba rin yung aerodynamic properties ng mga to. So, that's one of the things we study. This is one example uh, building uh, sa Nagato during Typhoon Unding in 2004. Uh, may mga, so may roof siya, then may roof tiles, and then uh, damage, well, linipad yung ibang roof tiles uh, due to a typhoon, due to the typhoon. So typical damage yan on the corners and the edges may damage. And then of course, uh, if we're going to start working for one of the top uh, engineering firms, uh, you're going to be designing or constructing one of these tall buildings in the future. So this is of course Makati, and you can see bawat building iba-iba yung itsura or iba-iba yung shape. Uh, and basically, basta nag-iba ka lang ng shape ng content, nag-iba na yung aerodynamics. So yun yung medyo uh, concern natin or problem natin sa wind engineering. Yun yung tinatawag ng bluff body aerodynamics. And then there's other structures that we need to study. Uh, kasama na dyan, billboards, etc. So, iba, iba na naman yung aerodynamic properties ng mga yan. Now, to study yung aerodynamics themselves, ito yung isang tool na ginagamit sa wind engineering, yung tinatawag na wind tunnel uh, laboratory or facility. So, for example, ito, this is from 1964. Uh, I don't know if you know about these two buildings. Unfortunately, they don't exist anymore today because of terrorism. So, yan yung World Trade Center Twin Towers sa New York. So, back in 1964, nag-wind tunnel study sila dyan. Uh, and when I say wind tunnel, more specifically, 
yung tinatawag na atmospheric boundary layer wind tunnel. So, kumbaga, yung mga aerospace guys nag-aaral, nagde-design mga kotse, aeroplano, they also use wind tunnel, pero iba dun sa wind tunnel na ginagamit natin for wind and civil engineering, essentially. And more recently, uh, I hope you all know about this, yung tallest building so far, uh, or as of now in the world, yung Burj Khalifa, formerly known as Burj Dubai, 800 plus meters high, uh, so, they also created the model, they put it in a wind tunnel laboratory uh, and tested it to test yung aerodynamic properties niya. And this is uh, a pic another model of that same building. Again, it's 800 meters high. So, and then we need to make a small model of that 800 meter high building. Uh, and then you can see here, uh, mga six footer siguro itong mga tao na to. And uh, they had to make this kind of a model just to study yung aerodynamics ng very tall building na yun. And then when you build tall buildings, uh, siguro you, you can design them properly for wind, pero ang nangyayari din is at the ground level, pedestrian level, ayan, nagiging malakas masyado kung minsan yung hangin, uh, nagiging, well, hindi na uso yung nagpapalda ngayon masyado yung babae, so dinilipad yung mga uh, skirts nila and so on, or yung mga payo, gamit, etc. Uh, or di kaya may inilipad mga small objects na tama sa tao. So, not good of course. So, we have to design for that. Uh, siguro ito yung isang example na nga rin yung sa Makati. Just imagine if there was a person there instead of this truck. So, ganun kalakas yung uh, hangin uh, in the vicinity of tall buildings. So, to start, and then another uh, aspect of uh, wind engineering yung tinatawag ng occupant comfort. Sa tall buildings, nagvavibrate yan eh. Uh, pag mahina yung hangin, hindi lang natin nararamdaman. Pero pag medyo malakas ng konti yung hangin, nararamdaman yan, merong mga nahihilo or merong mga nag-iisip na, oh, may problema yata yung building. But of course, that's not the case. So what some people do is uh, they build this uh, parang room artificial, well, basically parang room, they put it on top of a shaking table and simulate the load, uh, the vibration of tall buildings. And then inside, uh, inside that, uh, inside that room, so it simulates in an office environment, ganyan, and tinatanong nila, tinetest nila up to what point may mag start mahilo yung mga tao. And of course, when we're talking about vibrations, we need to design for that. Uh, one way is uh, introducing what is called a damper. Uh, ito, uh, tuned mass damper in tawag dito, you don't have to remember that now, but basically it's like a pendulum. What it does is uh, it counteracts, parang counterweight siya, it counteracts the vibration uh, of the building, uh, therefore parang napapaliit or nadadampen yung vibration. So ito yung sa Taipei 101 sa Taiwan, uh, I think 584 meters high yung building. Uh, in fact, you can go there. If you have a chance, you can go up and then visit the, that, uh, take a look at the damper and take a photo. Uh, this is a photo of that damper. Pakikita niyo dun sa, sa ilag ng car. May mga tao dun. So, medyo malaking, ano yan, uh, made of steel, ball of steel, to control yung, yung vibrations ng building due to uh, wind. And this is another aspect of wind engineering, cladding design. Uh, I mean, architects can do this. I mean, they can, but normally they won't. Uh, but uh, in this case, maybe you have a tall building, or uh, you would think, actually, sa harap ng tall building, merong uh, shorter building, you would think na dahil may nakaharang, uh, mapoprotektahan yung mga windows, but no. Ang uh, nangyari is both buildings nagkaroon ng damages sa windows, Pag na-damage ng wind, yung windows mo, papasok yung hangin, tsaka ulan, madadamage din yung property mo sa loob. So that's another concern. Uh, another concern is uh, yung kinatawag na windborne missile. Imagine niyo 200 kilometers per hour na hangin, maglagay ka ng dos por dos uh, sa ground or even a small uh, stone or rock, pwede yung liparin yun ng hangin. And then pag linipad yun ng hangin, tatama sa bintana, sa mga dingding, these are the types of damages it can do. So, wala pa masyadong reported na ganito, but uh, in fact, I know merong mga, during Typhoon Millennium, merong security guard na, uh, unfortunately, namatay dahil may linipad, bayero, papunta sa kanya. So, this, uh, another concern, no? yung windborne missiles na tinatawag. 
Another tool na ginagamit sa wind engineering, and baka sa inyo maraming inter maging interested dito, yung tinatawag na CFD, Computational Fluid Dynamics. So, for example, ito is some study actually from, uh, from UP. They studied the uh, wind pressure aerodynamics of a small house. Uh, but actually, itong CFD hindi masyadong ginagamit for structural uh, wind engineering dahil uh, malaki pa raw yung error. Pero for environmental study, nalbawa, you have to study ventilation and so on. So, ginagamit yung CFD. I'm talking about environmental so, of course, urban air pollution is one concern, so wind engineering. Uh, this is Shanghai, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. Uh, so, very polluted, basically, sa, sa China, no? uh, mainland, medyo polluted doon, dahil maraming industries, industrial facilities. Uh, although, siguro, yun yung unang impression niya rin, when we say pollution, usually from a factory building, meron siyang uh, 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 exhaust and so on. Pero in fact, one major cause of concern then around the world is yung pollution from vehicle emissions. In fact, ito yung one of the main culprits ng urban air pollution and people study this, so wind engineering. So minomodel nila yung, yung pollution galing dyan and so on and we study nila with the wind and so on. Uh, I think this last item, thermal comfort. So for example, dito, uh, lalo na sa ibang bansa ng malamig, may, may four cc sila, may malamig, may mainit. Inaaral nila yung comfort yung, yung mga tao. Baga, let's say, nasa office ka. Kasi kung mainit sa office, hindi, hindi ka makapag-concentrate masyado eh. Or ganun din siguro pag nag-aaral kayo. So inaaral yung mga tao yan. Of course, air conditioning is one way to achieve thermal comfort dahil you're adjusting uh, temperature, humidity, and you're providing air movement. Pero people study din yung effect ng clothing, yung uh, suot ng mga tao, tsaka yung body activity. Uh, for example, pag natutulog ka uh, at uh, let's say wala kang suot, 29 degrees, comfortable yun. So yun yung results ng mga studies dyan. And lastly, of course, they also use CFD, computational fluid dynamics, to study yung wind flow and temperatures around, let's say, or inside buildings and around buildings. So this is one example. Uh, visualization of results. So that's that's all. Uh, to summarize, uh, wind engineering may tatlong applications, structural, environmental, and wind energy. Uh, so may, again, may overlap with the civil engineering, it's basically civil engineering. And then we're, when we're studying wind engineering, we need to study engineering meteorology, uh, bluff body aerodynamics, and of course, you know, whether structural design, environmental design, or wind turbine design and so on. And then we have these three tools, wind tunnel, CFD, uh, and yung full-scale measurements. So uh, that's that's my presentation. I hope you learned something. I hope some of you, as I said, kahit hindi mo lang sa inyo maging interested sa wind engineering, uh, masayin ako. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Aquino, for that enlightening presentation. We are now inviting everyone to ask questions, should you have any. Our field reporters, Rachel and John, are standing by to assist you. Hi, guys. I'm John Paul. And hi, I'm Rachel. So we will be your field reporters for this afternoon. So just like this morning, uh, we will be moving around. And if you have any questions, um, we'll just be there. So guys, alam kong tapos na tayo mag-lunch. Alam kong energized na tayo for a set of new questions. So now, to formally start our, to formally start our question and answer portion, um, are there any questions? So, do we have any questions? So hearing none, Rizian, I'd like to ask our speaker, sir? I'd like to ask a speaker, yep. uh, I'd like to ask a question. If I would want to pursue a career in wind engineering, yes. are there any institu institutions here in the Philippines who offer the master's degree? Yeah, so as of now, not yet. But like what I did, I because I was interested in structural wind engineering, I took up master's in civil engineering, and then major in structural engineering. Of course, here sa UP Meron, UP Diliman, but in other schools, Meron then. And then, I did the thesis ko, uh, related to wind. So that's one way to study wind engineering here in the Philippines. But uh, I, I will tell you, there are many opportunities in other countries. You just have to be, you know, masipag, maghanap, 
and then yeah so maganda rin ma may experience from other countries okay. okay so how about from this side um, do you have any questions so we've got a question right here Good afternoon, sir. Uh, uh, Na-notice ko na po yung big discussion about green engineering. Pero meron na po bang nakadok na study sa Philippines about green engineering? Yes, meron na. So, like I said, when I did my master's thesis, basically, it was related to green engineering. And in fact, yung results ng thesis ko are now in the yung National Structural Code of the Philippines na tinatawag. Basically, yun yung uh, design standard for uh, buildings and towers and so on. Uh, Napagit ko rin kanina yung uh, wind, wind map ng Philippines. A civil engineer did that then. It's basically, I mean, by doing that, he basically did a wind engineering study. So yeah, uh, I've been looking at these things then. Uh, uh, the earliest I found, siguro from the early 1970s, meron ng gumawa ng wind engineering studies here in the Philippines. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So I think we have room for one more question. We still have any. Uh, so we have a question here. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Ask ko lang po kung nagkaroon na po ba ng studies about sa stabilities ng mga, build, ng mga engineering structures, specifically yung buildings po, here on Metro Manila, yung stability po, stability po ng mga buildings sa so, ano, high minutes po. Yeah. Um, of course, actually I can tell you now, yung, yung tall buildings lalo na, dahil basically it's a big investment. Uh, usually the developers or the structural engineers uh, or the architect or project manager will hire a wind engineering firm to do wind tunnel testing to check talaga yung stability. I mean, it's a basic requirement now, uh, basic knowledge now, if you have a very tall building or a very long bridge, uh, you have to consider, you have to check it for stability against high wind, essentially. So, uh, I guess the answer to your question is yes. Yeah. So, thank you, sir. Thank you for that wonderful talk and we really learned a lot from you. Um, looks like the audience have had their fill of questions, so thank you.